Well, welcome back. A second round of ceasefire talks between Russian and Ukrainian delegations expected to take place in the next few hours. You just heard Benjamin Hall said he's not expecting much to come from it. Moscow is intensifying its attack on major Ukrainian cities this morning. Troops have captured the strategic port of Kherson, the city of Kherson now. You'll see troops patrolling the roads in Kherson. This happened yesterday. Right now, several Russian warships are also headed to Ukraine's third largest city, reportedly Odessa. Joining me right now is career diplomat and former assistant secretary of state, Richard Bouchard. Uh, Bouchard. Great to see you, Richard. Thanks very much for being here this morning. What is your assessment of what's taking place in Ukraine this morning? Well, I think the Russians are going to keep pushing forward. And, and if you look at what they did in uh, Chechnya and Syria, when they, when they can't make the quick military progress that they hope for, they start indiscriminately sending missiles out and killing people. And unfortunately, I think it's going to get worse. Well, it feels that way, particularly as the Russian forces have now managed to take one major city of Kherson in Ukraine. Can the free world, can the West do anything more to stop Vladimir Putin? I think we can keep pushing on the sanctions, keep finding areas that we can block off, uh, uh, you know, sort of flow out the sides that we can stop. Um, but we can also prepare ourselves a lot better for the long term by doing things like enhancing our capacity to export LNG to Europe. So in the long term, uh, Putin doesn't have the leverage that he uh, that he has now. Everyone is saying that, that the U.S. needs to send a message that the U.S. and the rest of the free world will not be reliant on Russian oil. And yet we haven't done that. China is... Taiwan, both watching closely, as you uh, expect. Uh, yesterday, I spoke with President Trump about this threat uh, as tensions grow in the Indo-Pacific region. Here's what he said. Watch this. President Trump, do you expect China to invade Taiwan sooner rather than later? I do, because they're seeing how stupid the United States is run. They're seeing that our leaders are incompetent. And, of course, they're going to do it. This is their time. Richard, what is your take? I know you've said that you do not think China will be emboldened by the Russia attack on Ukraine. Do you still feel that way? What is your assessment? I, I do feel that way. I, I don't think, uh, I, I don't think, I think China understands the situations are not comparable. The U.S. defense to mid commitment to Taiwan is much, much clearer uh, than it was to Ukraine. Um, we had good relations with Ukraine, but not the kind of commitment we had to Taiwan. And second of all, the military operation against Taiwan is much, much more difficult. And I think, in fact, China has been surprised by the solidarity of the West and the fact that people like the Germans, who are expected to vacillate in this situation, have come on really tight. Uh, other countries, Singapore has imposed sanctions. So I think China's got to be a bit shocked by, this, by the solidarity of, of uh, uh, the front against Russia, and has got to be thinking uh, again about its plans for Taiwan. Yeah, it's a great point. Also, the CCP must be watching the way Russia has become something of a pariah for the free world. You've got American companies, Western companies pulling out of Russia. You've got a pushback on this aggression. And now China is dismissing the report that it actually asked, uh, that Xi Jinping asked Vladimir Putin to delay the invasion until after the Beijing Olympics. China's foreign ministry says the New York Times report is pure fake news. Russia invaded Ukraine four days after the Winter Olympics ended. Richard, your thoughts? You know, uh, whether they did explicitly or not, I think the Chinese uh, probably made clear they didn't want anything to disrupt Xi's success at the Olympics. And, you know, the Chinese feel kind of burned on this. If you look at, you know, he, Xi Jinping and, and Putin declared themselves, uh, you know, best friends, blood brothers. Uh, and as far as I can read the signs of most others, we don't think Putin actually told Xi what he was going to do. And the Chinese find themselves suddenly squeezed into this corner with the Russians, and now they're taking these little steps, you know, calling the Ukraine foreign minister, uh, you know, putting out uh, different stories on sanctions and stuff that uh, indicate they're trying to work their way a little bit away from the Russians back towards the middle. Yeah, I, well, I agree with you that it has to be stunning in terms of how the world has reacted to Russia's aggression. Uh, Richard, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for your insights on this. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you.